Good evening, I'm Grace Lynn Guile, and tonight we are presenting information about Stonington Community Center, which is lovingly called the Como. Uh, with us are two of its staff members. Beth Ann Stewart, the executive director, holds an undergraduate degree from Salve Regina University, a master's from Connecticut College, and has completed additional graduate coursework and training in social work at University of Connecticut. Welcome, Beth Ann. Thank you. And with her is Priscilla Hoquerol, educational director who has an, a BA in multidisciplinary studies from Castleton University, graduating magna cum laude with licensing in elementary education. Welcome. Thank you. Um, tell us, Beth Ann, what drew you to the Como and how long have you been its executive director? So I have had the pleasure to be the executive director for the past three and a half years at the Como. But my connection to the Como goes back about 26 years, which is the age of my oldest daughter. Oh, really? Um, I'm a Stonington resident and uh, the mom of three now young adult daughters. Yes. Um, and I first discovered the Como at Dubois Beach, which is right at the tip of Stonington Point. Uh -huh. Lovely little beach. Yes. And soon discovered as a young mom that was the perfect spot to spend my summers with the three girls. Uh, the girls continued on working. Um, at different points in their careers, their, their young careers obviously, as, as children um, at the pottery studio, uh, learning how to be potters uh, in the dance studio at the Como. I had one also in Kinder Fun, my youngest, um, uh -huh. as well as um, the dance, the pottery, uh, Kinder Fun, as well as JLP, our junior leadership program. So you've been a Como user for a long time before been. you became a director. I have you been. knew what it was all about. I knew. <laughs> I absolutely knew. And Priscilla, when and how did you become the education director? Yeah, so about two and a half years ago, I um, took on the position of education director with the Como. Prior to that, I was working as head teacher for the Como Kids program at the Como. So I was able to really get an understanding of the organization mm -hmm. and um, was thrilled to take the position. So Stonington Community Center is now 70 years old. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Um, until I looked at your website. <laughs> right. But it's more than just one meeting place. Describe its various um, facilities. So actually our full campus, campus um, includes approximately 16 acres. Mm -hmm. um, and within that campus, we have a variety of um, facilities. At the main facility, um, which is the main Como building at mm -hmm. 28 Cutler, we have um, a licensed kitchen, a stage, an auditorium, a gymnasium, as well as several classrooms. Mm -hmm. um, we also, in, across the street, um, have a lovely children's garden yes. through the Stonington Garden Club. We'll talk about that in a partnership. Minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also have four tennis courts, two mm -hmm. soccer fields. Uh, our most recent addition is a paddle tennis facility mm -hmm. that's had great success um, since bringing that onto campus about two years ago now. We also have on an annex, which is right next to our thrift shop, which includes uh, that dance uh, studio I mentioned earlier. Oh, I didn't know where the dance through. studio was. Right. Okay. Now that houses our exercise programs in karate. Mm -hmm. And we also have uh, two soccer fields, which you pass on your way into the borough off of North Main. Oh, yes. I didn't know yep. those were part of the, yep. uh, the That's community the center. And then right across from one of those fields is a pottery studio. That we Great. Have. Well, yeah. everything is within walking distance is. of the center, and that's how remarkable that is. Yes. That's wonderful. It's wonderful. Yeah, yes. for the kids and the moms. Absolutely. <laughs> and Absolutely. their dads. That's true. <laughs> okay. So um, we're going to talk about a lot of those things in detail. Mm -hmm. um, how many children enroll in the Como's 10-week summer camp? No, I'm sorry. I skipped a question. Tell us about the Como's preschool program for three to five-year-olds and before and after school programs that serve over 150 children each year. Yeah, yeah, so the great thing about the Como is that we really provide programming and educational um, opportunities for youth from all the way from three years old until through high school. And um, it's, our preschool program is a huge part of that. We have um, recently had been awarded the best of preschool for um, 
in the top three for the past two years for the Reader's Choice New London Day. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was great. And um, our program is continues to grow. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, Beth mentioned the campus, and mm -hmm. that's um, an essential part of the preschool curriculum incorporated into our day. We really take full advantage of our gymnasium, our soccer fields, um, our children's garden, mm -hmm. incorporate it into the, the preschoolers day, which makes it Gives you a lot of different mm -hmm. opportunities mm -hmm. for teaching absolutely. and fun absolutely. at preschool. I'm sure a lot of it has right. to be fun. <laughs> right, absolutely. And um, in addition to preschool, we do have the before and after school programs. Um, they are held on site at the Como, and then we have two off site locations at. Um, the Deans Mill Elementary School and West Vine Street Elementary School as well. Which is a great service to working parents. Um, Absolutely. That's one of the things that I mm -hmm. admire about the Como is that it's very in touch with the reality today right. and is right. supportive of um, the right. parents as well as the children. Absolutely. Right. <coughs> we actually, in regards to the preschool, um, made a, a risky decision um, this past summer to expand our traditional preschool program into a full day option yeah. for those families that uh, needed that care. Uh -huh. um, so our model now includes really a menu type model for the family that can um, have the traditional care mm -hmm. and has that person who's able to pick up their child right. you know, at 11.30 once the traditional day ends versus uh, the parents who need a little extended care mm -hmm. uh, and the parents who need a little longer care. Um, so it's really menu and we've had great success actually with that model, um, but it really is a sign of the times and, and paying attention to the needs of your community. And being very flexible to meet those needs. That's right. And, um, That's so, right. and even expanding your programs. Right, right. right. That's great. So now we get to the um, how many children enroll in your 10-week summer camp yep. and activities. And I want to know, how do you keep yeah. so many kids yeah. engaged and yeah. learning all summer? So we actually have a, um, because of we're a licensed facility through mm -hmm. the state, we have a lower ratio. Um, so our three groups in camp, we have three different age groups, and so each group can take up to 20 kids depending on the week mm -hmm. um, and so because of the lower ratio that means more teachers to each group right. and um, an easier ability to engage the, the our campers mm -hmm. and really provide um, a thoughtful and exciting curriculum for the summer yes more interaction yes. and teachers are a direct right. feedback from teachers and um, the ability to to have a greater impact. Yeah, yeah. That's wonderful. And then in addition to um, the, you know, our great staff, we have um, the weekly themed uh, curriculum weeks mm -hmm. for the summer camp, and um, that adds to the ability to ma maintain the interest of our campers throughout the summer. What are um, some of the themes? Yeah, absolutely. So, for example, week one is the first week of um, camp, and it's splash into summer. So everything, um, all activities that week are based around water activities, um, water games, mm -hmm. the beach, which is our campers um, visit the beach often throughout now, the week. Now this is Dubois Beach. Dubois yep. Beach In at the Borough, point, and right? it's um, we take the kids. They we all walk there as a group. Mm -hmm. um, they get to spend a few hours at the beach. We do uh, beach activities and come back. So the beach is a huge part of our camp curriculum as well. And I presume anybody who has gone to the beach has to have a snack afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. 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 So you have snacks and meals included in um, uh, most of these days. And but our, camper, our campers, mm -hmm. um, they pack a lunch, so okay. it's, um, um, they bring their lunch with them. Okay. Um, but we do do special snacks mm -hmm. and um, popsicles, all sorts of, yes. you know, summer, summer camp S traditional right. fun. Yeah. That's great. Um, Stonington Garden Club collaborated with the Como several, several years mm -hmm. ago to create the Children's Garden. Right. This was, I was still a member of the club, and, and I know all the the people, how excited they were, and I've gone down there and weeded and, and uh, planted and did a lot of, um, I think, spraying of poison ivy at the beginning uh, so that mm. the, none yeah. of the kids would get right. Um, right. in touch with that. So is it still used, and Absolutely. if so, how and when? We are so lucky to have the Stonington Garden Club 
to continue on as our partner with that initiative. Oh, so the members are um, still absolutely um, teaching planting and day planting. just happened two days ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Day. yeah. Um, and the children love it. And um, again, you know, we have an amazing team at the Como. Mm -hmm. um, so very creative um, with Priscilla's leadership and create some really fun uh, curriculum throughout the year for the children to become engaged with the garden. Um, so both structured activities as well as unstructured. And for me, it's really nice when um, I'm driving through the campus, walking through the campus, and I look over and there you see families visiting uh -huh. the garden. Yes. Um, and they're not Because they're open to the yeah. public even right. when it's not right. um, under, it's supervised. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. yep. so it really <clears throat> is a special little um, treat and a favorite spot for the children. Well, as Garden Club members, we were very thrilled to collaborate yeah. with you because a lot of kids today don't know where their food comes from. Right. Mm -hmm. And we felt a lot of the resistance to eating vegetables could mm -hmm. go away if they, if they picked their own mm -hmm. and saw it come out of the ground mm -hmm. and Absolutely. understood the difference. I grew up on a farm. Yeah. I know what a fresh carrot tastes right. like. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like a yeah. popsicle. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I don't know where you would find preschoolers making pesto. And this is what we do at the Como, uh -huh. again, with this incredible team that we have. Um, so and learning so to creative. cook at that age. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. That's right. wonderful. Yeah, we yeah. try, to, we try yeah. to incorporate cooking into our curriculum. I try to cook with the preschoolers at least once, or once a month. Uh -huh. um, and uh, specifically relating to the garden, um, they, they tend, like you were saying, they tend the whole garden, they, t they take care of the vegetables, they water it, and, and they're learning about that too. And then when it's t time to harvest, we take the vegetables and cook with them in our licensed kitchen as well. So it's really kind of, it's a, it's full, comes full circle. So. It does. It's, yeah. it's a, a miniature home in a way mm -hmm. because you're planting, you're growing, you're yeah. taking care of, you're watering, and yeah. then you're eating and cleaning up. Yep. <laughs> right, yep. right. So it's, it's a model for them and, and it's right. a great one at that young age. Yeah. Um, there are a dozen adult activities listed on your website too. Tell me about Zumba, drama mm -hmm. programs, pottery classes, and some of the others you mentioned earlier. Okay. Um, so traditionally, when folks who are familiar with the Como think of the Como, they automatically assume we're, which we are, a predominantly youth-serving organization. Uh, more and more, we've been expanding upon our adult offerings. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, I mentioned the Annex. That's where we host our Zumba class, which is an incredible workout if you've ever done Zumba. It's, it's Really I've an heard amazing about waterfall. It. I've never done it. You're dancing and you're sweating and you're losing a major amount of calories and, and so that's, and that's a great... detoxifying because Absolutely. when you sweat your skin that's is right. the largest organ of detox. Right. So yeah. Right. yeah. But yeah. that's the only part of your campus I haven't been in. Okay. So okay, we'll have I didn't to get know it was there. there. Yeah. I'll yeah. have to explore yeah. this Absolutely. summer. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we also mentioned the pottery studio, mm -hmm. and we have adult offerings as well as an independent potter program that continues, um, and that has a long history. Of, I've um, bought some of those yeah, pots. Yeah, pretty talented people. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, we also have um, a 50-year partnership, actually, with the Stonington Players. Um, we hold their... Um, place as well as provide um, access, of course free access to our resources for storage and such. Mm -hmm. So um, they're a great partner to have on campus um, uh -huh. and take advantage of the stage. Yes, I've seen them play yeah. on yeah. at the Como, but I never really realized that there was a, a long partnership between right. the two organizations. Right. So you're you're helping support oh, absolutely. Uh, a lot of creativity in this community. Absolutely. Um, we actually, um, on a side note, on average annually the Como donates over $60,000 a year just in facility usage to area nonprofits and groups who otherwise don't have the space. Could to not, didn't, right. don't have the space or couldn't right. afford to rent the space. Right. Exactly. That's wonderful. Yeah. I know the Garden Club does things there and, and yeah. Um, yeah. so I've I'm familiar with mm -hmm. that part of the auditorium and your kitchen. Right, <laughs> right, right. Um, paddle is really one of our newest um, features, and we're very excited about the growth that we've experienced since its introduction. Mm -hmm. um, last year, which was our full for our term calendar year, which is also our fiscal year for the Como, uh -huh. we had 114 um, members join. Um, so that's I should say households. 
um, households. So that's not households. It's not members. Quite so, as you many know, members. Exactly. Yeah. So just paddle alone, um, we had 114 last year. Um, very popular growing sport and we're really pleased to take what is typically a country club sport uh -huh. and bring it on to the campus of a community center and the reality is it's going back to that Como legacy that draws me continually back to the Como uh -huh. um, is the Como legacy did include paddle tennis courts behind the originally Como. right yes right well they're sort of a an ups, they were in a specific era probably after the turn of the of the 20th century mm -hmm. and the early mm -hmm. 1900s right right when the WAD club started and some yeah. of the other things local um, organizations right. started right. so that's uh, terrific yeah. too i had i didn't i didn't grow up in the east and so i'd never heard of paddle tennis okay. but so much for that and i haven't been down to play i play tennis okay. on your other courts from time to time okay but uh, I haven't tried the paddle tennis. So now that's Zumba and paddle tennis. Right. We're keeping a list. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. All right, all right. <laughs> okay. Oh, <gosh. laughs> okay. Great. Okay. Um, the other thing that I'm very familiar with is your thrift shop mm -hmm. um, because it's a great destination for bargain hunters. So if you're looking for little somethings for casual um, mm -hmm. gifts to for children's parties or uh, um, vases that you don't want to spend a fortune on. And so I drop off and I pick up. Thank you. We thank you for that. Um, the thrift shop is really uh, a critical piece of our fundraising, actually, because mm -hmm. the generosity of the community with their donations, which of course are tax deductible since we're a nonprofit, um, we turn around and sell them through our thrift shop, and that funding supports our mission, what we're able to do um, as a community resource. Um, and you can find some amazing bargains at our you can. thrift shop. Mm -hmm. You've Really incredible from designer to, you know, what we call, you know, at, at the Village Fair, we have a section of thrift, we call it um, treasures and trifles. Um, uh -huh. So, you know what I mean? Someone's treasure versus trifle. I mean, it's all in, in the eye of the beholder, and That's thrift right. never disappoints. Um, well, and a lot of people like period clothing, too, because yeah. they give you a, a, a real unique presence or take on things. Right. And, um, and sometimes the fabrics are far better than what's available today. Right. So um, it can, you do offer amazing things if people have the time to go browsing through. Right. One other little piece since we're just getting past prom season is we do host what was once at Stonington Human Services um, was the prom shop. Ah. And the town had made a decision not to continue that program. Um, so the Como took it on uh -huh. um, and took on on the responsibility of making sure that you know our local children have access to all that they need to get to the prom. Right. So we have a section um, within thr the thrift that is specific to um, prom, you know, apparel. Mm -hmm. right. um, and we will help um, the youth so they get have fitting to the rooms, prom, and you can try them room on and um, show us your your student ID. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, even if you, you're not going to school in Stonington, but you're a Stonington resident, we try to uh, accommodate, since that was something that came through the town as far as original donations. But uh -huh. yeah, so that's another piece of what we do, as well as the whole concept, especially in this day and age, where people are much more aware of the importance of recycling. Mm -hmm. um, so Absolutely. rather than throwing away, yeah. you're donating to a fantastic cause. Uh -huh. um, that's but right. also, you're not heading to a landfill. Mm -hmm. um, so there's so many components of you know why thrift is such an important part of our community. You know, I buy that argument and yeah. I pass yeah. it on. Um, men, some of the men in my family always hesitate to part with anything that they've ever acquired, yeah. clothing. <laughs> <laughs> and and so my my uh, urging was, just don't think of it as throwing away. Think yeah. of it as you're giving this to somebody you can't wear it anymore, right. or you don't wear it anymore. Right. You're giving it to somebody who might really need it, and that worked. Right. <laughs> so right. I, I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. Um, I had another. Uh, oh, I had a question about the paddle tennis courts, mm -hmm. which you've answered. But then I had another question um, with the garden club. We explored trying to help you get rid of the Phragmites, and at the time that we did, no solution was found. Okay. But they're gone now, so I want to know what okay. you did. <laughs> um, well, we, we had a will <laughs> to make it happen, um, and we had a great team. Um, the Stonington Village Improvement Association, SVIA, is uh -huh. another fantastic partner. Yes. Very generous to both the Como and the larger community. And um, I had received a call a, a few years back 
um, asking, you know, what's the wish list? We're, we're identifying um, different projects uh, that can benefit the community. And immediately I said, well, well we want to take the pond back. Because what happens with that invasive species of Phragmites is it chokes out any um, ability for any type of aquatic life, birds, um, to live there. Use the waters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so the removal of Phragmite is critical to restore the habitat. Mm -hmm. um, and we also, with my brilliant education director, thought, oh, here's a learning opportunity, right? So SVIA has graciously funded the project. Uh -huh. We had a committee, committee of Como and SVIA folks. We worked together to identify best practices, mm -hmm. decided to enter a contract with DEEP. I was going to say, and this was is DEEP what they do. had to be involved. Yep, yep. Yes. and they were really the folks to go to um, after we did of quite a bit of research. Mm -hmm. And so they are engaged, they've come in, they've done several treatments. It mm -hmm. is a five-year commitment, and then after that there's a commitment. Yeah, to um, Because it's it. so invasive. Yeah, one little piece just yep. continues to grow yep. more pieces. And that yep. was part of the issue with uh, when the Garden Club looked into it is, one, uh, at that time I don't think DEP had a substance that they authorized to use okay. because you, Como is built around a marshy area yep. so anything yep. you put in that pond is mm -hmm. going to go into the whole mm -hmm. marsh. Mm -hmm. So um, so congratulations Thank on you. Um, yeah. a will and fortitude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're, we're excited and, and what's really um, exciting for us too, especially from an ed educational point of view, is we've also reached out to other partners and, and received funding from Chelsea Groton Foundation, and they funded an outdoor presentation center. We've had uh, Joe Trelli, who's one of our staff, who's very talented with carpentry skills, is creating that center for us with the funding from the foundation. Uh -huh. We also, um, SVA is supporting a rolling dock that's going to be installed, as well as helping us purchase curriculum. Um, and then there'll be live feeds, video feeds, um, of the pond mm -hmm. into the classroom for the children, both our middle school program mm -hmm. and our preschoolers to uh, follow. Mm -hmm. And then Priscilla yeah. has some other amazing ideas of tying it all together in and the, the curriculum. opportunities are really, yeah. really yeah. endless. As well, far we have as that goes we out. have a few. We have about five or six more minutes. Okay. So tell us a, a little bit about those um, ideas. Yeah, absolutely. So incorporating the general. Um, a makeup of a pond into our curriculum is something that we're all, is already mm -hmm. done in the mm -hmm. preschool, mm -hmm. but being able to have that kind of access to the pond is really an mm -hmm. advantage for mm -hmm. um, the children hands-on. And then um, our middle school program, adding elements of, you know, testing the water mm -hmm. and looking at ecosystems in depth and um, it's really, yeah, it's and really amazing. And do you amazing. have um, uh, small uh, minnows and things, a uh, fish life growing in the pond? That's the hope, because yeah. right now the, the Phragmite has choked out right. everything. on that, yeah. So you don't yeah. even have frogs or tadpoles or anything yet? Not noticeable. The okay. last testing of the water, um, we had done that with um, our Club Como kids, which is an inclusive mm -hmm programming with typical peers and special needs kids that uh -huh. come together um, to testing and it's Didn't not quite it. ready okay, um, well, to support be, that. Could mm -hmm. be it won't happen until after the treatment stops. That's right. Pretty right. much. Right. So, um, okay. Um, before we talk about summer passes to the beach, let's talk about the Stonington Village Fair. We've got five minutes left, mm -hmm. so we, I wanted to be sure mm -hmm. and give enough time to the fair because mm -hmm. that's sort of a big mm -hmm. event. Mm -hmm. It does serve as a major fundraiser for the Como. I don't think folks realize that um, the Como staff manages that entire fair, which is like having multiple events all at the same time. Right, it's a And lot we're a of small work. staff at 10, <laughs> right. um, and somehow, because they're so amazing, and I'm so lucky to have uh, such an amazing team and, and supportive board of directors that we make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, and there's all these different pieces to it. So. Um, the traditional, the traditional book sale that folks look for and love, the, mm -hmm. the traditional artisan row where we have 40 different artisan vendors and Carson's selling, selling their, their wares. wares. Mm -hmm. um, we also have um, silent auction. Um, we have a taste of thrift that I mentioned earlier where we'll bring things over to get people a little excited about. about Go coming. check out <laughs> thrift, you thrift, know, sure. it's the bargain yeah. you can get here at the fair. We, of course, have the traditional fair games for the children. We've Which added is a, a big popular it is, and event they love annually. It, love yeah. And they love the moon bounce we've thrown mm -hmm. in in the rock wall for the older children. Um, okay. Last year we included a um, pie bake off, 
and we're returning that. Um, okay. That was well received. <laughs> um, and of course, we have the traditional um, soup garden. Um, That's been there for the a long way, time. With delicious soups from various, mm -hmm. very generous restaurants and sponsors. And uh, certainly the concession stand and, and the board of directors manages that really well for us. Yes. Um, uh -huh. And we have also added the past two or three years now is uh, fantastic lobster rolls. Mm -hmm. um, Ooh. And those are popular and we sell out. We just had a meeting the other day saying we need to buy more lobster meat this year because we always sell out. And well, why should we, that we, happen? We, it right. shouldn't be happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> okay. um, but, and music and uh, just a really fun well, day. Well, um, I used to be one of the flower arrangers with the garden club garden, because right. you garden sell club. the arrangements yep. in their booth. Yep. And, uh, and I used to then um, go through all the jewelry um, yeah. suppliers and that's also where I bought that pot that that one of your potters yep. made at the Como yep. so um, so you're um, providing buying opportunities for the whole community absolutely <laughs> yeah family fun too oh. mm -hmm. um, okay now let's then move to the beach again because okay. as summer comes up that's important yeah um, how can viewers get their passes to not just Dubois Beach but also to Sandy Point, and explain Sandy Point um, to viewers who may not be aware of that. Okay, so Sandy Point is a little island right off of Stonington Point, only accessible as an island by boat, um, typically your smaller boats, kayak. Um, Avalonia uh, Land Trust is the owner of um, Sandy Point. Through the years, the Como has been um, managing the island. Um, a change has occurred this past year in Fish and Wildlife has come in um, in partnership with uh, Avalonia to take over the management and enforcement of Sandy Point right? Um, because it is a preserve first and, and there foremost. are a areas of where um, migrating birds and Correct. nesting birds uh, must not be um, accosted by humans. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so the Como ha is continuing as we have for years now in um, providing the service for the community of purchasing their permits through the Como and they simply go online to do that. Okay. So we are still the source for those daily or season permits mm -hmm. um, but management will no longer be one of our stewards but instead actually a law enforcement official from Fish and Wildlife um, enforcing the rules and regulations of the island. And that, so a little more enforcement uh, presence needed to be um, yes. there to pr protect yes. it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, we have a minute left. So before we get through, tell okay. viewers how they can become a member, a volunteer, mm -hmm. or a donor mm -hmm. for Como. Okay. So Como has uh, many opportunities to become engaged, if not as a participant, but certainly as a uh, member. We have 800 households currently that are members. Um, we have over 200 volunteers. You could be a volunteer in our thrift shop. You could be a volunteer on our courts, on our fields with the children, in the classroom reading a story, um, or at our events. In fact, Village Fair is coming up and online. They can go and sign up to be a volunteer for various shift to get involved in their community at the fair. Mm -hmm. um, as far as donors, we of course have a Donate Now button on our website. <laughs> of where course. We daily welcome um, <laughs> any donations that can help defray our costs of, mm -hmm. of maintaining affordable programming. And we're very fortunate, you know, I'm very grateful. It's a small community and everybody and supports the Como generous. because you support us so well. Yes. So yeah. thank you thank both for you. all thank your you. efforts and for coming here today and helping um, spread the awareness of what you do. And I wanted to be sure that viewers know that the, um, the fair is August 6th this year. Yes. And it runs from what time to when? 11 to 4. 11 to 4, and it's one day only. So yes. don't miss it. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for joining in, and I hope that you'll uh, tune in to Graceland Presents Inspiring Nonprofits again next week, at uh, Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Good night. Mm -hmm.